I have Asperger's syndrome, I have ADHD, chronic anxiety, and I've never been diagnosed with it, but I'm positive I have Tourette's. Um, and what that means for me is that I have tics, I don't pay attention very well, I'm always full of energy, and I, I've managed to, you know, and I, I used to get very anxious and get, have panic attacks every day and be physically sick over the worry of things. Autism for us is a, an invisible condition. So you, you look at Luke and you can't see that he's autistic. Um, the only way that you know he's autistic is by his behaviour. If I'm having a bad day, that means that I'll be twitching constantly. <laughs> and that I won't be able to have a conversation or make eye contact with anyone. I'll be wanting to be completely on my own. And that I just, my mind will be fluttering. I won't be able to pay attention to anything for more than two seconds. That my eyes will be darting around trying to find anything to distract. His brain doesn't function the same way. He doesn't think the same way. He doesn't feel the same way. He has extra sensitivities to light, to sound, to smell. He um, quite often vomits because of smell or something doesn't taste right. My life growing up with autism was very difficult and a nightmare, really. I was, as my mum will probably tell you, hell on two legs. I think um, early diagnosis is absolutely vital. If Luke had been diagnosed earlier, there were, there were two areas in which that would have helped him majorly. Number one is with education, because he didn't know how to fit in, and he, it isolated him enormously, being the kid who was always in trouble, always running away, always um, not able to concentrate, fidgeting around, got sent out of class for being inappropriate, and that, the knock-on effect of being isolated, um, affected his self-esteem and then his anxiety grew massive because he he knew that he couldn't control himself he knew he couldn't behave in a way that was expected of him but he had no idea why or how to change himself and had had we known that he was autistic and had he had the correct help I'm sure that he wouldn't have been expelled from school at age 15 and have been through that awful time where he tried to kill himself because he just thought that he was no good at anything. I was treated differently by teachers who didn't understand my behaviour and why I was doing um, these things and wasn't able to communicate or make eye contact, for example, and was just on my own little planet. And the other kids, obviously, children are cruel and didn't understand me, and because I was odd, I was victimised for that. Luke's autism isolated him at school, and um, for that reason he became a target for bullies. People would enjoy winding him up because they knew they'd get a good response from him and that would disrupt the lesson for them. So uh, the bullying actually got to the point where Luke himself hated going to school. He developed a school phobia um, and he would vomit every morning with the fear of school and I would have to make him go because um, I was in trouble if he didn't go to school. So it became a really anxious, horrible time. Waking Luke up to go to school was like, torture. I really struggled at mainstream school because I, I, as I said I didn't fit in. I was like being on an alien planet and uh, I was, they, they tried to give me help but the, to be fair I had one TA who did understand me and was trying to help me out, had no real friends and all the other teachers in the school just thought I was a naughty adolescence or was answering back because I have, I have cheek rather than a genuine misunderstanding or lack or interest. And also being ADD, if you're in a classroom with 30 people you don't understand what's going on you have no interest in the subject and there's meant much more interesting things in the classroom. You'll sit and fiddle with a pencil for four hours as opposed to doing the work. He became uh, more and more isolated and that made his autism worse because all he wanted to do then, feeling like he was a failure, like he couldn't fit in no matter what he tried to do, um, he became so autistic that he had no social contact outside of school um, and he would hide in his bedroom and it got to the point where he wouldn't even eat meals with us as a family because he just felt that he, he couldn't cope with social contact at all. So his autism was massively exacerbated by the loneliness of not having help at school. It doesn't surprise me that 40% of children with autism are bullied. I mean, I, I was, because my problem with it was that I didn't understand at a young age the concept of sarcasm or of joking, because if you if someone said something to me, I would take it as an insult. Because what, what, if I tried to make a joke, people took it the wrong way because I didn't know how to do it. So anything anyone said to me was offensive. So literally everything that came out of anyone's mouth caused conflict. The fact that we didn't have a label for his behaviour isolated me totally, because people would look at him, judge him purely and simply on his 
bad behavior and they would think that I was a bad mother and um, the, the place that I felt the loneliest was at the school gates because I would stand there waiting for Luke to come out and he would come out of school utterly pent up with the frustration and the difficulties that he'd experienced in the daytime and I would be his target so he would come out of school and beat me up quite often and the other mums would look at me uh, like that's the mother of the child from hell. What I think would have been helpful and what Ambitious About Autism are trying to do is to put the information in place to educate people about autism so they don't think that someone's just a naughty little child. They realise it's an alternative way of thinking and a lack of social skills so that if a child is in mainstream, both the students and the teachers can understand and you know, help them to achieve their potential. And if mainstream still isn't the right environment, the, the measures are put in place to put them in specialist education. So getting a label for Luke's behaviour, getting the autistic label, was incredibly sad in some ways, because then you have to face up to the fact that it's a lifelong condition and you've got to find out about it. Um, but on the other hand, it kind of explains what other people are seeing and it gives you a it gives you an explanation for them so you can turn to someone and say he's autistic even if people don't know what that means they know it means that he's likely to behave in a different way what i'd say autism is is a classification of an alternative way of thinking because everybody on the planet is on the autistic spectrum and autistic labels are made up of someone who has so many characteristics and traits or labels within a certain category to be given a label for the general public to understand why they think that way and although those lab the labels are in place, like you know Asperger's, dyspraxia, but then people don't tend to understand what those labels entail, what traits are in them, and what that means about that person, what they have to go through. But it's really his understanding of language is incredibly different. He's very literal. So um, if you said something to him, like for example, um, there's a story behind that picture. He would want to see, physically see the story behind the picture. Um, he would take that very literally. And he wouldn't understand gesture, facial or um, subtle gesture or body language. So when somebody is autistic and they can't give you eye contact, that's not because they don't like looking in your eyes. That's because they find it uncomfortable to look at your face and listen to your words because they're using too many of their senses so they can only do one or the other. It's extremely tiring. I'm very glad I'm hyperactive, to be honest, because otherwise, you know, because you, you, everything you do, you have to think about. You have to think about making eye contact, you have to think about walking, you have to think about just trying not to say the wrong thing or to say it in the right way. Our children are brilliant. They're really amazing children. They show you a completely different life to the one that you thought you were going to have. I wouldn't swap Luke for the world. I, I treasure everything he's taught me, and he's taught me more than anyone else ever could or would do about what's really important in life. It gives me a reason to get up in the mornings just because there's so much interesting stuff out there in the world and in life, and my curiosity is endless and I just, it, not necessarily like, oh, what's the square root of pi, oh, I find that really interesting, but no, just people and just how different people react to certain things and, yeah, I, I just find life so interesting. I think every parent's dream for their child is initially for them to be happy and after that for them to achieve whatever they're capable of. I'm Nick Vicker, I'm 19 years old, I'm about as handsome a man as you'll ever meet and I'm a young ambassador for Ambitious About Autism.